Subversion is a version control system that uh, came out in uh, 2001 and it has several advantages over RCS, which we discussed in the previous video. Namely, it doesn't rely on locking files. It supports more a workflow where you copy, you work on a local copy of the latest version that's in the repository, you modify that and then you merge your changes back into the repository. So it does not prevent you from editing any files at any time. However, at the time you're trying to send your files back to the repository, it may tell you someone else has since made changes, but then it offers you to merge these changes with your changes. Then you can locally test again whether the merge is still okay, makes sense, compiles correctly, passes tests. And if you have merged these changes, uh, and again, nobody has uh, sent, updated something in the repository in the meantime, then you can send your version back and it becomes the latest version. Um, so it allows far more uh, concurrent uh, work, but it does have the, uh, it creates the overhead that there are these situations where you may have to manually resolve so-called version conflicts if two people independently made changes to the same lines at the same time, then the version control system can't automatically decide uh, whose changes have priority and some manual intervention is necessary to resolve this situation. But this is pretty much the same as what people do in RCS if they want to have uh, go on with work while someone else has lo had locked the file. Um, <clears throat> also, Subversion uh, manages entire directory trees, not just uh, single files, and it also understands tree edits. So if you uh, copy a file, if you delete a file, if you rename or uh, move a file, all these operations are tracked by Subversion in a similar way in which uh, modifications of lines inside files are worked. Subversion also has uh, several different ways of uh, supporting remote access. Uh, you can add Subversion to the Apache web server such that uh, you can use a extended version of the WebDAV protocol uh, to uh, submit changes via HTTP. Uh, perhaps more commonly used these days is a version where uh, Subversion uh, communication with the repository is tunneled over the SSH protocol. Um, so the for the full documentation uh, there is this uh, subversion book published which is very accessible and readable and if you are on the windows gui and you don't like the uh, command line interface there are also several uh, graphical user interface uh, front ends for subversion available uh, one i've used quite a bit is known as tortoise svn that's an extension for the Windows Explorer, where in the um, right-click context menu of the file, the subversion operations show up. One thing that you may have to get used to when working with uh, several version control systems simultaneously, because maybe different projects prefer different ones, uh, or in different use cases, um, different version control systems may have different benefits, is that they all have a long list of verbs for naming the operations that you can do. But these verbs in each of these version control systems mean something different. So the operations of moving something from your working directory into the repository is not called a check-in, but is called a commit in subversion. Whereas the opposite, the operation of getting a version from the repository into your working directory is called an SVN update, not a checkout like in RCS. The checkout verb is also used, but it's only used to create the initial copy of your working directory before you start. And there's also an SVN admin command that is used to um, manage the repository and the main command you have to use is 
you first create a repository with SVN admin create explicitly at some other location. This may be on a remote server or this may be on a uh, just a directory on a on a shared file server where every team member has write access. And after the repository has been created, then every team member can do a checkout and then they can all start making commits and updates. Subversion in its use of uh, terminology and um, command line interface is closely modeled on an older version control system called CVS, which started out as just a layer of a shell script on top of RCS and it uh, still uses uh, the file format of RCS as its internal database format. But uh, CVS had quite a number of uh, problems because it didn't really understand the um, renaming and copying, replacing of uh, files. It didn't really understand some uh, Unix file types like uh, symbolic links. Um, commits uh, were atomic only for a single file, not for multiple files. So if two people committed simultaneously, you may have ended up with a mix of their commit. Uh, the first committer one for some of the files and the second committer for some of the other files. And in the end, the repository may not have been always in a consistent state. Um, <clears throat> so subversion is very easy to learn for current uh, CVS users, but it simplifies and improves a lot of things. So generally CVS I wouldn't recommend uh, using today anymore, but you may still encounter some uh, very old projects that are using it. And uh, both uh, RCS and CVS repositories can be converted quite easily into subversions. RCS repositories are basically just directories of files that are maintained under RCS, but the RCS uh, folder in there, if you just take that as a directory and you need to add one uh, single metadata file, which can just be an, an empty file, um, then the CVS command will recognize a directory of RCS files as a valid uh, CVS repository and the CVS to SVN uh, conversion tool will help you to convert not just CVS repositories but also directories of RCS files into a subversion repository. So I have many old projects that I started with RCS in the 1990s that I have then converted without losing any revision history into subversion repositories. And more recently, I have converted them into Git repositories. <clears throat>